Welcome everyone to my Twilight Cup video and my here I am actually rival rank because I had a problem with my account and my global rank got reset it. So that's that. Now first match versus Ragib. MH I decided to take Quillfish lead because he doesn't have a Venomoth in his team and the only thing that really beat Quillfish in his team are Alolan Radicate and Toxiroak. Now he decides to go with Alolan Muck. Now that it's a fairly neutral matchup versus Quillfish. I decide to go for Aquatail spam. I lag a little bit. I decide to shield the Dark Pulse. And I just go for Aquatail spam. In I in my team I actually had mainly three cores. I will talk about each one as I as the video progresses. He decides to shield my aquatail. Now here I decide to I I could have let my quillfish go, but it had so much health that I decide to shield, use my last shield and get switch advantage. Now the thing about Quillfish is it has mostly neutral matchups and nothing really hard walls Quillfish except for Tindacruel and Venomoth. So he had neither. So this was actually a really good match and he actually shielded the acid spray. So it was really good for me. Now I let my quillfish go down. I decide to come with Skuntank because if if he had Toxirook in his back, my and I switched into Venomoth, he could just farm. He could just take out my Venomoth and in the end take out my Skuntank with it. So I decide to come with my Skuntank, and I'm ready for him to switch if if he has Toxirook in his back. But let's see what he has. He has no shields, his skull bat goes down, and he has Clefable in his team. Again, if if I had used my Venomoth back there, his Clefable could kill my stun tank. So that's why I switched into stun tank. Now Clefable Clefable is such a good pick in this cup and I feel Clefable is really underrated. But Clefable has really good usage. I actually managed to get a Poison Fang Venomoth just a day before the my cup. And the second match, I he actually leads with Alolan Radicate. Now at this point, I wasn't really sure about Alolan Radicate's matchup because I didn't really face Alolan Radicate that much in my practice sessions. No one didn't use Radicate. And I knew the sims, but I wasn't, I didn't, at this point I haven't really tested out the matches practically. So I decided to shield that crunch. That crunch will put me in KO range. Now I, sh I should have, I should have gone for an acid spray and an aqua tail. So that his radicate gets much more damage and I could bait a shield that way. Now he uses two shields on his radicate and I decide to let my quillfish go because I can take out his radicate with my skunt tank. It was my mistake. I shouldn't have done that. I should have just acid sprayed that radicate or in my first charge attack and beat it at the shield, but still. I decide to shield that Hyperfang, that Hyperfang would do heavy damage to my Skuntank. Now I decide to farm a little bit. Now he was he was getting close to another Hyperfang. Hyperfang was 7 quick attacks I think, 6 and 7 quick attacks respectively I think. So it was 5, five quick, attacks, quick attacks and 1 if he, if he actually managed to piggyback. So he comes back with a little one muck. Now I ran the flamethrower crunch set on my 
Skuntank because of Skuntank Mirror and Alolan Monk. Now normally Skuntank actually loses to Alolan Monk, but with energy advantage and flame tour, Skuntank can win against Alolan Monk. If if they're both at full health or Skuntank has a really good energy lead. Here Dark Pulse doesn't KO me. And that was such a good switch. He knew that I was really extremely close to a flame shore and he switched it instantly to his cliffable. Now if I had gotten off even a crunch to his cliffable, I would have won this match, but it was really well played by him. Really good switch there. And his cliffable would get to a meteor mash and meteor mash would KO Venomoth at this health. Even if I had gotten off that crunch, I would have won it, but it was really good switching. Cliffable is deadly against all poison darks. The thing about Cliffable is it wins against Azumarill and Poison Darts with one shield against all Poison Darts with one shield. And third match I decide to take Skuntang lead against his Alolan Radicate. And I decide to beat out his shield with Crunch. And he falls for a shield bait. Hyper Fang would do heavy damage to Skuntang. Alolan Radicate again, I think is extremely good pick if you don't have Lassus or Tumbreon. But, but the thing is Alolan Radicate doesn't have as much bulk as Umbreon and it has quad weakness to counter. So Doxyrock will delete Alolan Radicate. But, again, Alolan Radicate has extremely good matchups. Almost as good as Lassus or Tamrion. Well, Hyper Fang does KO me. I could have shielded there. Now this is another core I was talking about. This is Venomoth, Azumarill and Skuntang core. This is my second core. And throughout the whole tournament, I in every match I ran Venomoth and Toxicroak in my all matches and switched up my last spot. Now although I had the switch glitches, uh, the switch trick glitch there, but I decide not to not to call a rematch right away because it actually helped me switch faster. Now, again, I encourage players to wait out the match before calling a re because you aren't actually sure whether you're going to win or lose and most of the times i tend to work around that switch tree if if the glitch happens now he goes for he goes for dark pulse dark pulse would put me really low again really good switch he switches into cliffable Poison Fang would do quite a lot of damage to Cliffable. And his he has a shield lead, but I have energy advantage on my Azumarill. I go for straight out Ice Beam to bait out his last shield. He doesn't shield. Here I don't I tried to use Ice Beam because I thought he was close to Meteor Mash, but I actually didn't need an Ice Beam and KO him with Bubbles. He does have a shield advantage. And he shields. And we are both really close. I needed to undertap there, but I had CMP. I didn't know if I had CMP or not. If he had CMP, it was his game. I won this match because of CMP. Good game, Raggy BMH. Really well played. Really good switching. Third match versus Random IV. I decide to lead with Azumarill. I take the Azumarill, Venomoth, and Skuntank core here. 
and he goes for a Drapion lead. Now, the people with Drapion, you tend to lead with Drapions. And even if he had Quillfish lead or Frostless lead, I had I had positive matchups against all of them. Now, I hesitate there. I hesitate to switch into Skuntank. The thing is, in one shield scenarios, Cliffable actually beats Skuntank. So, I actually don't have anything to beat his Cliffable apart from my Venomoth. I should have switched into Venomoth, but I decide to save my Venomoth for, for his last Pokemon, which I... Which yet I don't know. I was thinking about Tendercruel in the back. If he had Tendercruel and I didn't have Venomoth, it would have been really bad for me. And Tendercruel hard was Azumarill, so I needed. But he had Frostless. Now I ran Flamethrower and Crunch, Crunch, not Sludge Bomb, only because of this Frostless and Tendercruel matchups. Skandang actually loses against Frostless and Tendergruel if Skundang doesn't have Crunch. If Skundang has Crunch, Skundang will get to Crunch one Powder Snow faster than Frostless. And again, in two shield scenarios and one shield scenarios, Skundang actually wins. Get two wins if you have energy advantage or even a single energy advantage will win you, win you the match. So, Frostless and Tendergruel was the only reason I ran Crunch instead of Sludge Bomb on my Skuntank. Now it, it actually paid off in my tournament. I thought he would go for Shadow Ball. I shielded, but he shield baited me there. He won't get to another Shadow Ball. He lagged there still. He, he wouldn't get to a Shadow Ball. I go for instant player off on his Drapion. And it puts Drapion really low. Now it glow gets close here because I decide not to shield. I should have shielded there. I should have. But he actually had Sludge Bomb on his Drapion. And my Azumarill fainted. Now Bite Drapion does win against Venomoth. But he's such low health that my Venomoth can just finish him off with Confusions. That was game number one. Game number two, I take again. I take Azumarill, and he goes with Drapion lead. Azumarill is a really safe lead if your opponent doesn't have Skuntank or Alolan Muck. Azumarill has really positive matchups against by Drapion. Now here again, I decide to go. I decide to use my charge move and bait out his shield. He shielded and this time I switched to Venomoth because I thought that he would take the same team with Frostless in the back. He goes for Meteor Mash, I shield. Poison Fang just charges so damn fast. It takes just 3 confusions to charge a Poison Fang. And I KO his Cliffable and have residual energy left. He does have Drapion and I know that I can get to Silver Wind. I undertap there and get to my Silver Wind. If I didn't undertap there, I wouldn't get to a Silver Wind and his Drapion would just KO me. Now still again I haven't mastered undertap myself. Here I decide to come with Skuntank because no move Drapion really has can threaten Skuntank. If I had switched into my Azumarill, I would have needed to shield that Sludge Bomb. But with Skuntank, I don't need to shield anything. I can take two, two, and may, maybe three Aqua Tails. I'm not really sure. But still, it's, it's a positive match against Skuntank if Drapion has Bite. Against Infestation, it's a little bit different. But I haven't yet seen someone run infestation on Drapion yet, as of yet, on with my practice buddies. I don't know if anyone in my tournament ran infestation actually or not. Now, Bite and Flamethrower Skuntank actually loses against 
Azumarill. So I took, I knew that it loses against Azumarill, but I really needed to win against Frostless and Tentacruel because those two were a really big threat to my team and could wipe out my team. And here I overtap and couldn't get to a crunch. We are, he has energy advantage and I have HP advant advantage. It's a really close game from here. I do have residual energy left. Now the next player off will probably kill me. And he gets to his charge bow faster. He has CMB, but he uses Ice Beam. I have no idea why he uses Ice Beam. We actually CMP died there. If he had gone for player off, he would have actually KO'd me there. But he goes for Ice Beam and wastes his energy. It, it was a mistake on his part, and that costs him the game. And I take round number two. Round, round number three versus Zahin, 103. I take Skuntai. Venomoth and Cliffable. This is the third core I mainly ran. Now this core I felt was one of the strongest cores I had in my arsenal. Because if in this core the strategy was I lead with Skuntank and if I lose the lead, suppose he leads with uh, Toxic Rook or something that really beats Skuntank out, I switch to Cliffable and he switches to and he kills my Cliffable, but if he has Toxic Oak or something that kills Skuntank that can also be killed with that is countered by usually that is countered by Venomoth. So I actually ran the Cliffable and Venomoth combo. So I would sack Cliffable if I lost lead against Skuntank and then finish the match with Venomoth. But I actually won the lead here and he switched really slow and I get off the crunch now again I would get to crunch faster than him and in the mirror I have flamethrower which can threaten which will do heavy damage to both skunk tank which would, which would do heavy damage to any poison dark that's the only reason I ran flamethrower and it does heavy damage to his skunk tank we both are at one skill and I couldn't get to a crunch. If my Skuntang was better IVs, maybe I could have gotten off that crunch. My Skuntang is actually 96%. It has really bad IV spread. If probably I would have gotten off that crunch if my Skuntang was better. Now he has gold bat left. I don't need to shield. He uses shadow ball. He should have gone for Poison Fang there and killed my Cliffable with Poison Fang and charged up a Shadow Ball, but it wouldn't matter. I had a shield left and Confusions can kill Golbat easily. Now Venomoth and Dustox actually win against Golbat. Only uh, one person ran Dustox in our team, in, in our tournament. And thus I was surprised by Dustox. Dustox bulk. Dustox is so bulky and both Dustox and Venomoth managed to win against Golbat if you shield the Shadow Ball. You need one shield and Golbat would, would just die to confusion. Now again I catch Golbat with Skuntank lead and he switches into Skuntank this time a better switch so I switch to my Clefable. Now I thought he, he had 8 poison jabs, so he was he actually went for a sludge bomb, I predicted right there, and Skuntank would just die to charm here. That's, that's the thing. But he had energy build up, because I switched a little bit slow, so he actually managed to get a sludge bomb, but in full health, neutral conditions. Cliffable will win against Skuntank with one shield. I decide to come again with my Skuntank and farm ton of energy. I basically have, I almost have two crunches charged up. Now, Venusaur actually catches me a bit off guard here. I thought he would come with Frostless, but 
I should have gone for crunch anyways because crunch stab crunch could do heavy damage and I get to this time I use crunch I didn't make the same mistake again and crunch does a lot of damage to Venusaur now with with I know that he had gold that left and shields down his gold bat can one shot my Venomoth so I switch into my Venomoth and leave Skuntank because I had to shield the Sludge Bomb or Fence Bend with my Skuntank but against his Venusaur I don't really need to shield. I do shield the Poison Fang though because I know that oh he has he was running Poison Fang and Air Cutter set nice. Sludge I'm sorry Shadow Ball doesn't really hit anything apart from Venomoth and what not so sludge bomb is so um, air cutter is actually good now this is the matchup i was talking about himmel 731 was running a dust tox so again i decide to go with my skuntang venomoth core leading with skuntang because people with dust tox tend to lead with dust tox now crunch does a lot of damage but if he had Venomoth it would have done so much more he would have needed to shield there. Dustox is just so much tankier than Venomoth. I get to another crunch. If I had Flamethrower and Sludge Bomb I would need one extra poison jab for each Flamethrower putting me at an energy disadvantage. So running crunch in this in this Neutral scenarios are actually better, but against against winning matchups, you actually need Sludge Bomb for killing fairies. But against Charm users, you they will shield the Sludge Bomb anyway, so you actually don't need it. But against Azumarill, you do need. Now, excellent switch by Himmel here. He switches into Skuntank and catches the Crunch. I should have waited one more turn and charged up that Flamethrower. But I switch instantly into my Clefable. Now his Skuntang is already so low that I decide to sack my Clefable. Because Clefable has done its job. It has taken down Skuntang so low that I can farm out that Skuntang for a little bit of energy lead. And that's why I don't shield my Clefable. If I shield my Clefable, it, I would have been at a disadvantage the whole match. Now I knew that Dustox had Dustox's attack stat wasn't as good, but he had Toxic Rope in his back and instantly KOs my Skuntank. But I have Venomoth in my back, and that's why I run the Venomoth, Clefable, and Skuntank core. You have two things to beat: Fighting and Dark, Venomoth and Clefable. And his Dustox just dies to confusion. And one tap and his Toxic is dead. So really well played by Himmel. Really good switch but I think that Toxic wasn't really doing as much to his team. And even if he had Tenderclaw I had Venomoth in my bag so. And I hard lose this lead and now this is the thing I was talking about this score. If I hard lose against Skuntang I, I switch into Clefable. Now that was a late switch on his part. He switches into Dust Ox. Now even if I sack my Clefable, I have Venomoth for his Toxic Rope. If I had a, if I didn't have Venomoth and took something different, I wouldn't have that match. So I took two things to counter Skuntank's losing matchups. Because I'm not really good at predicting Leads actually, although I de I do win a lot of leads in this cup, but still I'm not really good at predicting. So I came up with this strategy. It it I actually saw this strategy used by someone in the Pittsburgh Twilight Cup. He was running Skuntang, Venomoth, and Tokus, but I decided to take Clefable because I actually prefer Clefable and didn't have Tokus at this point. 
I decide to shield the Silverwing. Now he he's really close to another Silverwing, so I don't go for any energy farm or anything. I just go for straight crunches. Now he shields there, and I don't shield because I know he has Toxic in his back. I I actually win out that match with poison jabs and have almost a flame already. Now he has CMP. I don't get to flame sure, but I decide to shield anyways because flame sure would would KO I think flame sure at this range would KO Toshio, that's why I shielded. And it does KO Toshiro. GG. He has Azumarill in the back. I decide to put as much damage on that Azumarill as possible. Now we actually CMP died there. Because I was one poison jab ahead because of his Toshiro. And due to the switching animation delay, I was one poison jab ahead, that's why I got priority. But he had CMP otherwise. And that's the thing about poison fang venomoth. If I ha if a normal silver wind venomoth has could win at this hilt, I think, but it's a really easy matchup. But poison fang venomoth getting poison fangs earlier than silver wind. Knocking out fairies is crucial, crucial. And I do take the match versus Emmanuel 7 and 3. Really well played. Now, the final round versus Shaun 12. I decide to take Skuntank, Cliffable, I'm sorry, Skuntank, Venomoth, and Azumarill Core. I didn't take the Cliffable Core because he had a low on mark, a low on mark against both Skuntank and Tifable, that's why I didn't think it. and he does lead with a low on mark. Now normally a low on mark wins against Skuntank. But Flamethrower variant it's shield shield based. Against Flamethrower Skuntank it's shield based. Now I don't shield because I know it's going to be a uh, acid spray and it is an acid spray because all moves of a low on mark are registered by Skuntank. And Skuntanks too, apart from Flamethrower, that's why I took Flamethrower because of the Poison Dark matchups. Flamethrower does heavy damage. Now my Skuntank is low. I decide to go for a Crunch. I I over tap there and he has CMP. Dark Pulse would KO Skuntank because it's it has lower defense and it does KO my Skuntank. I decide to come with Azumarill and farm a little bit of energy. Now I'm expecting, I'm expecting a poison type. And he, he, he switches into Vigitov. I charge to an Ice Beam and instantly switch. Now here I think he didn't, I think he didn't, he thought that I didn't have Poison Fang on my Venomoth, I think. He didn't know that I actually had a Legacy Venomoth, so he didn't shield. And I do so much damage to that Clefable, almost taking it out. I decide to shield there, because I can get to a Poison Fang or a Silver Wind. I have Silver Wind charged. Let's see what he has in the back. He has Venomoth in the back. And I get to a Silver Wind. That I should have gone for two Poison Fangs there. And under tap. But I went for Silver Wing, I don't know why. If I went for a Poison Fang, I would have had residual energy for another Poison Fang and would get back to back Poison Fangs. Now I knew that his Venomoth did, didn't have Poison Fang. It was probably Silverwind and Psychic. And that 
can Psyche can hurt Azumarill, but not not as much as Poison Fang. I decided to shield here, thinking it was a Psychic, but it was a Silver Wind. Silver Wind basically does nothing to Azumarill, and Azumarill is just so tanky. Player of is resisted, that's why I go for Neutral Ice Beam. And I take game number 1 versus Shaun 12. Really well played, really well played. Now, match number 2. Again, I am expecting a Lolon Muck lead, and I do get a Lolon Muck lead. Now, here again, the same mindset. I am going for straight flamethrowers. And if he tanks the flamethrower, I will go for crunch the second time. Now here I do get to flamethrower. I think I have I think I have CMP in this match. I do get to flamethrower. And flamethrower does heavy damage to his Alolan Muck. And he goes for Dark Pulse here instead of Acid Spray. Well predicted by me. And I decide to go for a crunch. And here I have CMP. He, I think he had Acid Spray charged. That's why I got Crunch faster because of CMP. And I take out his Alolan Muck. He has Venomoth in his back. Now I get to a Crunch. I could have got it off that Flamethrower, but I didn't take. I didn't risk it here because I'm not really good at under tapping. So I go for Crunches. Crunch would do heavy damage to Venomoth still. Yeah, I think I should have gone for Flamethrower. It, it, it didn't matter anyways because Venomoth did shield that. So that's that. It goes for Silverwind. Silverwind does basically nothing. Now I have Venomoth in my back. I go for Ice Beam. I don't shield because I knew he has, he, it was 4 confusions, meaning a silver wind and not a psychic. I go for straight ice beam. And ice beam KOs Venomoth. And let's see what he has in the back. He, he actually brought a Spiritomb. Really, really well picked. Spiritomb actually has positive matchup versus my Venomoth. Shields down. Spiritomb can Shadow Ball one shot my Venomoth. Now I bait out his shield with my Ice Beam. Now I do know that he will get to Omni Swing faster. And Omni Swing will put me dangerously low. Sucker Punches aren't really doing anything to Azumar. And he does get to another Omni Swing. And Keeping my shield, saving my shield, won me this game so dominantly. And I get to player off. I should have under tapped there, but still, it didn't matter. He wouldn't get to Omnus Wind. And I one shot that Spirit Room with player off. Really well played by Shaun12. Thanks to everyone for participating and giving me this cup and I actually went undefeated. This was my weighted Twilight Cup so that's that. This is my third Tanmundi Cup win and I would like to thank everyone for helping me. I, I wasn't really good at PvP when I started off. I was really bad and I started off PvP late. I started during the Tempest Cup, was my first cup, Shabab Bhai, Niloy Bhai, Ishtir Bhai, Fahim Bhai, they really helped me become the player I am today and also I, li I like to shout out every single player who practiced with me, Mehran, Nera Bhai, Maruf for beating me in two World Format Cups. Now Maruf and Niloy Bhai don't really play anymore. They are taking a break and it really sucks without the cup really sucks without them man. We I personally want you guys back in our tournaments and I would like everyone, even the new players, I would encourage 
I would like to encourage everyone to start now in in season two or the uh, the custom lower cup that we are going to host our community is going to host and it has been an honor playing beside you guys it really has been an honor and i would like to thank and appreciate all those hours you guys spent practicing with me playing different matchups nerding out on different pokemons different moms it it was a fun ride i would like to end the official season with a montage of Robinjo Shorobor where we actually play and the montage of all the players enjoy this is Bhuvan Ahmed not really signing out until season 2 but thank you everyone all my viewers all my practice buddies thank you for everything peace out